So now we can turn our background on now that we've applied collision to our platforms. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add a camera that follows Penny Pixel, but doesn't leave the constraints of the background. And it's going to follow with some nice smooth behavior. So of course, you guys may have seen, if you want to do a very simple follow camera, you can just take the main camera, make it a child of Penny Pixel herself, right, of the moving character. But what you'll get when you do that is if we enter play mode, we can see that the camera kind of is a little jerky, right? And it's just going to follow her out of the frame when she falls off the platform. Uh, it always moves one-to-one -one with the character, right? So if I move even a little bit, the camera is immediately tracking, right? And it's giving us maybe more camera movement than we want. So what we're going to do instead of that is we are going to use Cinemachine. So Cinemachine is a new feature for Unity. Uh, originally created by Adam Myhill for the Asset Store and then acquired by Unity and made a part of the free offering, which is really cool. So I've already installed it in this project. You don't need to if you're following along, but if you want to get it for your other projects, you can get it from the Asset Store. So I'm going to go to the Cinemachine menu and choose Create 2D Camera. Now, the camera's going to go off into space, right, because it doesn't have a target yet, and we'll notice a couple of things. The main camera now has this Cinemachine brain component on it, right? And the way that Cinemachine works is pretty cool. You don't actually have multiple cameras. Instead, you have these virtual camera game objects, right? Which are basically placeholders for where the camera is supposed to be. And then Cinemachine will move the real camera to blend between those different targets. So in this case, we just have a single camera. It's really simple, but so it's just gonna be controlled by this virtual camera. So the virtual camera has on it a Cinemachine virtual camera script, and we're gonna use this to control our main camera and to, to do our behavior. So the first thing that we want is we want our Cinemachine virtual camera to follow Penny Pixel, right? So we're gonna drag the Penny Pixel game object into the follow field, and we're gonna see that it instantly brings her into the center of the frame, but it's a little too far out, right? The, the orthographic view is too large. So we're gonna take the orthographic size. We're just gonna shrink it down, something like that, bring Penny into the middle. Um, and I'm gonna actually temporarily, again, turn off my background, and I'm gonna make this the background of the camera white, just so we can really see uh, these guides. So. Cinemachine draws these kind of gizmos in the game view while it's selected that allow you to edit how the camera is going to interact with Penny. So first of all, right away, just by setting that follow target, now the camera is following Penny, but you can see it's not following in that same one-to-one. -one. Importantly, there's now this dead zone. So the white space in the middle, if we move, we're not going to move the camera. It's only when we get out into the blue area that we can see the camera starts to move. But importantly, while we're in the blue area, the camera moves smoothly and with a little bit of damping to catch up to Penny, right? So it basically brings her back into the white area smoothly over time. If we get into the red area, I'm maybe not fast enough to do it. Let's slow down uh, the X damping so we can see it working. If we get into the red area or fall off the platform, it's gonna go one-to-one -one and start moving at her speed to force her to stay inside these guidelines. So we can think of the blue as a kind of a soft limit and the red is a hard limit, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this dead zone bigger, right? And we can just click and drag in the viewport to do it. And I think it can be reasonably big. And I think that the soft zone is pretty good. I'm obviously not gonna go for that crazy high damping. I think actually a, a damping of one is pretty good. We can test this out. That feels pretty nice, right? It's going to bring it back so that she's in the frame, but if she wants to run around on one of these platforms, she can, and it's not going to uh, move the camera excessively, right? One of the, if you just want to see how it feels, right, we could turn the X damping down and we could get a kind of more sort of Sanic the Hedgehog kind of feel there. Um, 
but I think that this setup is going to be pretty good for us. Now, we've solved one problem, right, of having a nice smooth follow camera, but what we haven't solved yet is the fact that if Penny falls out of the background, we go off into space, and we don't want that, right? So what we're gonna do is we are going to add to our virtual camera what's called a Cinemachine extension. So we have down here this extensions menu, and we're gonna go ahead and choose add extension, and we are gonna add a Cinemachine confiner. It's gonna add another component, and what we're gonna do it's gonna prompt us to say a bounding shape is required, right? And what this means is we need something to set the, the limits on where this camera can go, right? And what we'll use for this is our background. So I'm gonna unfold the background, select the sky gradient game object, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a component to it. The component that I'm gonna add is under Physics 2D, and it is a Polygon Collider 2D. Now, importantly, you need to use either a Polygon Collider 2D or a Composite Collider. Um, and so I'm gonna use a Polygon Collider 2D, I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna click Edit Collider, right? This is gonna allow me to ed edit the collider in the scene view, and then I'm just gonna drag, 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 and drag a little misclick there. We'll put this back in here. Rip. And so I'm just gonna set this so it's inside the limits of the background. As you can see, we could make some kind of weird shape if we wanted to, right? Which might be useful if you had like a cave over to the side and you wanted to limit the camera to go in there, but not, you know, you might have some irregular side pieces of this and you could cover those uh, with the custom shape of the polygon collider. So I think that's pretty good. Now, what we'll see, right, if we enter play mode, Penny is now inside the collider, so she's gonna weirdly levitate uh, up to the top of it, and that is because she is colliding with it, right? It's trying to re resolve the collision uh, by getting her out of our the box around the sky, right? The literal sky box. And so what we want to do is we want to make this a trigger. So we're going to click is trigger on the polygon collider 2D so that now it's not going to attempt to resolve that as a collision. Um, and then we're going to return to our CMV cam one, and we are going to drag a reference to the sky gradient game object into the bounding shape 2D field of the Cinemachine confiner. So now if we enter play mode, we will see that if Penny, oh, I think I put this, oh, can I, oh yes, I can make it. So she can leave the frame, right? Um, but the camera won't, right? And the hard zone won't go out of the edge of the background. And if she falls out of the frame, it'll track down, but we'll never see any of that white uh, on the outside of the frame that we don't wanna see, right? So really nice and easy way to just, and obviously you probably would want some kind of invisible collider there so the player can just walk off the edge but really easy way to just define the constraints of our camera um, in a nice and uh, sort of elegant way. Okay, so now we've seen how to set up our camera behavior with Cinemachine 2D. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna dig deeper into tiles and brushes. And we're gonna look at how to create platforms using what's called a rule tile. Somebody's asking with Cinemachine, can you just move the camera on the X or Y axis and ignore the other axis? Sure, you could just you could do that with the dead zones, right? You could just say, you could just limit it all the way down so it couldn't move vertically or horizontally or whatever it was you wanted. Dog Ramiko Gokan asks, can we set different dead zones for different areas from the editor without hard coding it? Uh, what you can do is you can make multiple Cinemachine virtual cameras and switch between them that have different dead zones. So if you get to like a different level where you need a different uh, camera behavior, you could just have another virtual camera.